Bismillah elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selam ala Resulillah. Ya Rabbena zidna ilme ve taqwa ve barik fi uqatina ve fi akvalina ve fi afalina. Ve taqabbal minna ve la ta'akhudna bi dhunubina ve kusurina. Ente Mevlana ve ne a'temed aleyk ve ne tevacih ileyk. Ve ne tubu ileyk. ونصلي ونسلم على الذي أرسلته بالهدى ودين الحق أما بعد I want to focus a little on the reality that Islam brought into the lives of many of those who have converted that's not to say that you know the issue of coming into Islam doesn't have its difficulties because it does have its own difficulties but the level of transformation that a lot have gone through a lot of people have gone through it has brought a sense of peace to people and a lot of that has to do with the transformation of lifestyle and some people they still struggle with certain issues but a lot of what we see with regard to the suffering of people you know we find that Islam has alleviated it or Islam has a way of alleviating it and sometimes people don't take the proper means to be able to appreciate what it is that Islam brings but there's a level of stability that Islam brings uh, to people's lives that may not have been there and that's why the journey of those who convert to Islam is much different than those who uh, have been born Muslim so to speak and that's not always the case but in general that's what we find and there's a level of transformation that Islam brings in our interpersonal relationships especially when we build on that there's a level of friendship a level of support and again you know it has its own imperfections given where people are at because people have their deficiencies in practicing Islam but when I look and I see where a lot of people are outside of Islam these are things that are very much missing you know these are things that are very much missing there's a, a common ground that Islam builds for people there's trust you know that comes into play there's you know there's a, a sense of community and brotherhood and sisterhood and again all of that stuff is still it's not at the level where Islam desires, but it's definitely more than what many people have outside of Islam. And, you know, sometimes it really hurts to see the condition of some of people in our community. Allah, it hurts. The level of instability, the level of community breakdown. And... Sometimes you wish, you know, the deen could be there. But the unfortunate reality is that it's not. You know, sometimes you wish that the deen was there for people. And a lot of the suffering that you see in the community, and I'm talking really about those, I'm talking about outside of the Muslim community, you know, a lot of the suffering would be alleviated. And it's unfortunate that sometimes the Muslims themselves don't see the, you know, the the blessings that are in the deen and what, what kind of transformation that it brings. And this in itself creates its own problem. It creates, it creates a problem because when people expect that, when they expect certain things to be there from the deen and when they're not there, it confuses them and it puts them in a situation where they don't know where they stand, whether they should, you know, kind of go back to their old ways or, you know, where they stand. But the dean itself really, you know, and watching people throughout the years, there's just certain things, you know, that it brings into play. And again, with, with the imperfections that the Muslims have, you know, I have to say that there's some aspects of community life there's some aspects of building aspects of family life that still you know it's levels of stability that are present that are really not there for a lot of people you know i think that with this situation with the the pandemic where everything is shut down where you know 
where the messages are not there, this, that. You know, a lot of us, we appreciate, you know, those who are in the struggle, so to speak, in trying to build community. And we appreciate the efforts that people make. You know, sometimes, you know, we go at it with each other, but I think that going at it with each other has a lot to, is a, a lot of that is, you know, insincerity and, and, uh, and people trying to make an effort you know they're trying to they're trying to really make an effort to see how it is that they can practice but unless we are willing to kind of bring that to people and a lot of us are not because we're trying to escape whatever it was that we were going through on a personal level on an interpersonal level but unless we're willing to bring that to people as a gift you know to bring an alleviation to a lot of the problems that people face and people face a lot of issues they face trust issues love issues stability issues you know a lot of those issues are what really breaks down the community and unless we're willing to bring that to people then you know we have to really ask what is it that we're bringing because talking about Allah wa ta'ala being one that's one thing you know but that becomes after a while it just becomes a set of concepts for a good many people and they watch to see how it is that the Muslims are acting and so I think that you know if there's some sort of change that takes place, I doubt that life will go back to normal. We already being prepped for this being like maybe a year, two years of instability and, and all that type of stuff. And then the economic situation. But, you know, when things open up a little bit, really, Muslims really need to share the concept of community outside of themselves. You know, Muslims really need to share what it means like... Uh, to experience a different lifestyle and a transformation of lifestyle. That's not going to come by people hiding out in the Muslim community. You you have to interact. You have to go through that struggle. You have to you have to be willing to go through the fire of, of, of dealing with your own people and what they go through. You know, and I'm talking about from your own tribal communities. You know, and a lot of times, you know, people they want to take refuge back and, and separate from from their people and their community. But that job is not done, you know what I'm saying? And that's where, in the past, that was not the case. People were really involved in Dawah. They were involved in being in the community, and they represented something. And they were the stronghold for the community. That's how people began to understand Islam, by the interaction and practices. So, you know, I wanted to leave off on that note, but the ni'mah of Islam is a big ni'mah. It's the blessing of Islam. It's a big blessing that's meant to be shared. It's not meant to be hidden. Assalamu alaikum.